Hey, what's up, y'all? My name is Devontae, and I sacrificed my time so you don't have to. It's been a while since I've actually gone out of my way to completely chew out AEW from a logistical standpoint or talking about their attendance or talking about their television numbers. It's been a minute, a good minute. Outside of that little excerpt I touched on about a day or two ago talking about their collision numbers and shit like that, but that was more so in reference to what they were trying to do with this whole new show that they're going to put out there. It's 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 ridiculous, bro, and it's so obvious what you have to do, man. You keep stretching yourself out then. You see the photo right here on the screen it's the same photo that i'm going to use for the thumbnail because i need this to be said multiple times for the aew fanboys man you guys are doing nothing more than harming your company you sit back and you try to play this whataboutism game in regards to wwe and you'll bring up this number 40 if i've seen this throughout twitter so far because now they can't hide behind the guise of oh well this picture was taken maybe five minutes before the show even started it was taken five hours before the show started people were camping outside and not too many people Okay, and that's how much they love AEW and that picture in reality is the crew it's 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 some of the crew's family members like you keep making excuse after excuse after excuse without actually honing in on the problem see this is gonna be one of the few videos where I legitimately am going to give you my positions in regards to AEW from a concerned fan I hate this whole notion I've said this plenty of times in the past before that I hate AEW because I talk so much shit about them no man it's just telling you my grievances as a professional wrestling fan over 30 years as a professional wrestling fan who has been there when professional wrestling was at its highest peak as far as exposure is considered to the mainstream audience i am just a concerned wrestling fan and you guys sit here and then you take that concern and you say it's concern trolling that's the new thing that i'm hearing nowadays concern trolling what the fuck does that even mean i mean it's not used in reference as far as professional wrestling is considering in terms of attacking me but they use that as a reference whenever talking about something that's clearly fucking detrimental whether it's something in regards to health risk whether it's something in regards to a person uh as far as what they're doing as far as their uh, their lifestyle is considered they use this term concern trolling in order to downplay the effects of what the person is doing negatively to contribute to their life or outside factors in regards to who they're who they're harming outside of their own life concern trolling it's so fucking insane and for the first time, for the first time, I've seen this used in a post on Twitter. I do say you're concerned trolling about AEW. Okay, so do you want me to just completely bash them, un like, just nonsensically? Do you want me to just bash them nonsensically? See, I highlight the points that I like to see whenever I talk on my AEW reviews. Just because the majority of the review happens to be negative because I'm spending so much time on it doesn't mean that I don't highlight the positives. Doesn't mean throughout the, the entire review in itself, I don't talk about more positives. I just focus on the negatives because that's what needs our focus at the moment because it feels like the negatives is what's being cheered on by the AEW fanboy. See, that picture that you see right there, that was this piece this that was this previous collision show and, and, and look i know not all this not the entire onus can be put directly on tony khan but there has to be something someone has to pull some executive producer to the side someone has to pull somebody from warner brothers to the side and they need to talk they need to really have a long conversation and they need to sell them on the point that having more does not mean that does not mean good does not mean good. If for anything else, you have to give people a reason to want more. Just having more for the sake of having more and then you spending money. Because I know this whole thing nowadays is content is king, right? Have a bunch of content, put a bunch of it out there. People can just consistently put ads on it and shit like that. But what does it mean in the end of the day if all the shows that you having to put out there are not getting any ROI? Return on investment. I feel like I've been saying this for so long now. What, what does any of this mean if you're not getting a return on the fucking investment? And you see that with Collision. It was an unnecessary show to create to begin with. I can understand Rampage to a lesser degree, and even then, I still don't think you have even validated Dynamite, but I can at least look at it from the perspective of, okay, in 2021, CM Punk is coming in. Brian Danielson is coming in. You guys are doing relatively decent numbers as far as staying in the million range. Around that time, a little bit more consistently, you know, compared to previous years, and a little bit after that, I can see why you would want to do a show like Rampage. But after you recognize two things, Rampage was a complete fucking afterthought, after a minute, and it didn't even take that long, 
about two weeks to be perfectly honest with you before your show got cut in half as far as the attendance as far as the fucking actual viewership number in itself you, and, then, and then you look at the numbers going forward that should have been your thought and think to yourself okay maybe this is not a good idea but then what do you do you turn around and you buy roh okay fine you want to buy roh because you want to keep the legacy going on i get that i understand that get rid of rampage then make roh the new friday show that's what you should have done it would have felt more like a bigger deal instead no you keep rampage and you keep roh mind you they already have dark elevation they already have dark on youtube they're just straining themselves completely thin with absolutely no popularity no momentum to be gained from this whatsoever by this point in time when they purchase roh and then you keep going on making more purchases for superstars who have absolutely no credibility in regards to a mainstream audience at all you do not i repeat they do not i repeat they do not have anything in regards to a connection with the mainstream audience how the hell do you build your entire company on a niche is beyond me i don't get it it's so insane and then they like to speak out of both sides of their stupid faces on one hand they like to flaunt their numbers they want to misconstrue and misinterpret and they do it purposely just to manipulate their dumbass fan base in order to argue on their behalf because they know no one else outside of their worshiping dumbass fan base will ever fall for this and to be perfectly honest with you i don't even think their fan base even falls for this it's just a, it's just a number that hey well maybe somebody on the wwe side will fall for this and they can start trying to fucking chew out chew out our company but they don't realize that almost everybody that they argue against is going to be smarter than them because after all they are aew fanboys after all they have no fucking brain maybe two brain cells but goddamn are they're working overtime right now inside their minds it makes no sense to me how you can strain yourself this fucking thin then go out of your way and you pay for so many fucking talents who are not relevant i get it punk get it danielson get it to a lesser degree hell even sasha banks i get it to a lesser 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 degree because of the potential especially seeing how they were connecting with the audience in their previous countries a will osbury a kazushka okada i get it nowhere near to the money that you're paying them but i get it in regards as to why you want to bring them over because if nothing else the potential the Mercedes, the John Moxley's, the Edges, the Punks, the Brian Danielsons, the Jericho's. I get it. Starting a company with them, bringing it in. I get it. The Kenny Omegas, the Kazushkas, the Ospreys. I get it. Previous audience fan base, you see how they connect with the audience. If you do your due diligence in regards to giving them something of a method to fuck with, to hold on to, to harness, then maybe they can connect in the same manner that they connected with that previous niche audience with this mainstream audience because they showed the potential. But then you start hiring people that I don't even understand. What the fuck was the purpose? What the fuck was the purpose? Especially if you weren't going to do anything with them. Maybe I can see the potential, but you're hiring people with all due respect. Guys like Jay White. Who in the fuck cares about Jay White? Maybe you, one, two, three people in the audience, gives a fuck about Jay White. Who else gives a fuck about Jay White? I don't give a fuck about Jay White. I'm pretty sure nobody else gives a fuck about Jay White. But I guess because he's attached to the Bullet Club, then that's all you need nowadays to get over in 2024, right? As if that's even relevant to anybody else outside of Hot Topic who know nothing about the Bullet Club. Besides, well, that's a good looking shirt. Don't believe me? Go look at Nirvana for an example. So, Jay White. Okay. With all due respect to him, Jay Lethal. Why? With all due respect to her, Soraya, formerly known as Paige. Why? Amber Moon. Why? Malachi Black. Why? Andrade. Why? All these names you're picking up, and I'm saying to myself, why, 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 why? And it goes on and on and on, and you're stretching yourself even more thin because the superstars at least at the time although you can argue today because they're picking up even more lame fucking talents from other places that no one gives a fuck about these people are taking away tv time from the superstars that you should be helped cultivating so eventually they can get over maybe they can expand your tv audience maybe they can give a reason to have a legitimate television show outside of dynamite outside of rampage outside of roh which, by the way, those shows shouldn't exist to begin with. 
There are so many things. It's like they actually think that they're at WWE's level right now. That's what the fucking problem is. They think that they're currently at WWE's level right now. Until reality hits them right in the fucking face and they have to be reminded of this time after time after... And it gets annoying. It gets annoying because it's like... On one hand, you want to sit back and you want to offer so many suggestions as to what AEW should do from a fan from a fan base standpoint, right? But realize, people like me who talk about AEW, hell, even Jim Cornette and people of his niche who talk about AEW, Vince Russo who talks about AEW, uh, Conan and, and Disco Inferno and all those guys, we are all critical. And I'm not trying to say that I'm on their level, but I'm saying I'm one of those type of critics of AEW. We all have the same type of mindset. What you need to first and foremost do is folks get is focus on the aesthetic of the foundation of professional wrestling. All this shit that you're trying to focus on in regards to what makes professional wrestling is not working. Your mentality of consistently trying to focus on the end ring product is not working. This abstract way of it's almost like a fucking delusion, right? Creating an illusion of pretending that all the things that you are a fan of, based off of some e-fed bullshit you've been contracted via the internet, it's not working. And you are in such an echo chamber, you are stuck in such a fucking bubble that these fans are gassing you up and it's making you worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. You know what I've been seeing actually people now, it's, it's funny. It's like we are in two different fucking planets, bro. The Meltzer fan base will tell you, oh, well, the show last week, it was actually not their best show, you know, like, I wish they would have done more of this, you know, too much time to this, 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 this. I thought it was a good show because we actually got fleshed out stories. Okay, so this is what you're going to start off with going forward. Okay, I can see the natural progression as to what you're doing here. All right, maybe you shouldn't focus too much on the wrestling here. Say that for the pay-per-view. Let's dedicate some more time to this. They took the complete opposite approach. The complete opposite approach. And instead, they're like, well, I mean, you had this. I forgot what they were talking. I think it was Ricochet and Sammy Guevara where they were like, oh, they could have been given more time. My nigga, what? My nigga, what? He's another one, Ricochet. Brought in for what? For one match in particular after Will Ospreay? What the fuck are you going to do with him afterwards? But you said more wrestling? And the amount of comments that I was seeing on this is asinine. The way these people think are fucking warped. They are warped in the fucking brains. I swear to God, I swear. And this is why I say it almost feels like it's political to a certain degree. I'm getting out all my grievances today. Fuck this shit. I almost feel like it's political to a degree. Because I feel like the wrestlers that they are constantly trying to defend and stick up for and just the actual aesthetic of just the wrestling in itself it almost feels like to a certain degree almost like the whole um you know uh what's the thing i'm talking about right now like uh, a meritocracy argument where it's like this guy is busting his ass and he's doing his thing in the ring yet he's not being rewarded for busting his ass and doing his thing in the ring he should be given rewards upon rewards upon rewards upon rewards because he can wrestle and for guys out there who hate the fact that i bring this up i don't think you understand the w and wrestling is wrestling because wrestling starts with w i'm a dumb fuck and my bottom lip hangs out to my fucking chest and that's why i give good head tony you can constantly tell them how much get head i give you whenever i take your dick and shove it down my throat when i'm blowing aew it, it, like bruh bruh and it, 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 it's irritating it's irritating because it's like damn we have another alternative we have a wrestling company who can legitimately stick it to wwe keep them on their toes or for anything else and they just consistently make dumb fucking decision after dumb fucking decision after dumb fucking decision listening to these fucking nimrods which it's even worse because the aew fanboys are so fixated on the wrestling they don't even recognize that and i think i speak for the majority of you guys we all agree at least within this community we are not opposed to the wrestling in itself now i'm not going to sit here and say that it's the number one priority but it's damn sure a priority it's damn sure probably two or three because i need a reason the reason the story will be always number one 
but we are always in agreement as far as what we want to see done in professional wrestling. It's just for you, you, and again, I say, I swear, I don't even think you care about the end ring action. There's no way someone can just sit there and just watch straight up wrestling for no fucking reason, and your whole reasoning is the moves in itself, but I swear to God, it's the same fucking kind of move set that you've been seeing for over five years, probably even going as far back as maybe 15 to 20 years if you were watching wrestling as far back as ROH back in the early 2000s is not as or help maybe even the cruiserweight division in WCW if you want to go back that far hell even some people were tape training going all the way back to the late 1970s you have been seeing this fucking shit now granted it's just started to dominate over the past decade but the wrestling for the purpose and the sake of the wrestling has been going on never being fixated on because no one back then were a bunch of nimrodic dipshits it was always a fixation as far as the end ring product going as far back as Tiger Mask and Dynamite Kid in the early 80s. It was always a fixation, but it was always regional on top of that. And people had their own niche as to what they wanted to watch. Never did they take their niche and try to make it something as if everybody has to be complacent to follow their rules in regards to what professional wrestling should be like. Sorry, I had to randomly pause that for a second. I had a phone call that I had to take care of. What the fuck was I talking about? Oh yeah, the stupidity behind AEW fanboys not realizing that professional wrestling has always had a fixation going back about 50 years when it comes to the fixation on the end rank product in itself. Look, we have always had an agreement when it came to professional wrestling. Universal agreement, never really spoken upon. It was just something that we knew as professional wrestling fans, right? We see a hot feud. It's consistent. We want it to get to a point where there's a reason to want to see them wrestle. Then they wrestle. And if we like it enough, we want to see more of that. Whether it's the two safe competitors who are in a feud or whether it's someone who is resembling that who can do the same exact thing. That has always been the aesthetic behind professional wrestling. It's a male soap opera. And to take that, to ball it up, to throw it away... And now it's just this whole thing worrying about how good a guy can flip at what size. And it's not even to say that the size in itself doesn't matter. The size does matter. I don't think it matters to the people <clears throat> who pretend as if it's nothing uh, worth of to worry about. But it, it absolutely does matter because it also, with the professional wrestling, at least the mystique of it, has always been these guys are badasses. It's not just going out there and then doing this stuff. It's also having to fit the bill. You know, these guys are these guys are badasses. They're tough. They'll beat the shit out of me if I try them in real life. They're tall, they're fat, they're skinny, but they're rugged. That was always the aesthetic, and that's the way that wrestling was always approached. And then you take all that away. God damn, they keep ruining my damn mojo. Got another phone call. Sorry about that. Again, I just left work not too long ago, and I'm still super hyped up right now at the moment. It just really pissed me off seeing that photo. So I can't remember why I left off on, but I will say this. I will just end it with this because might get another fucking phone call messing around right now. All I'm saying is you see that photo and what the hell else were you expecting? What other conclusion were you thinking you were going to get to when it was all said and done? Eventually, this was going to happen. See, this is the thing. And I'll, and I'll end up with this. It's not just an AEW thing. It's a WWE thing. I feel like ever since, and not even Hulk Hogan. Well, Hulk Hogan, yes, but in a different iteration. I think the NWO, I think Austin, I think Rock, the Monday Night Wars, the Attitude Era, if you will. Professional wrestling has been coasting off of the name, has been coasting off of the aura of the Attitude Era and the Monday Night Wars for the better part of nearly 30 years now. And that's the entire optics when looking at professional wrestling is the attitude era. People don't think about that. People don't really sit back and then they say to themselves, oh, whenever I look at professional wrestling, my immediate thing that I go to, I mean, unless you're younger, obviously, but even then, you're younger, the image that was derived from what you're seeing right now was most likely derived from the attitude era as far as the aesthetic and the appearance of the superstar or even the gimmick to a lesser degree. Or maybe the superstar in itself had a previous gimmick lost the previous gimmick and became way more cheesier, but they were known for that previous gimmick. See John Cena for an example. Coasting off the name of the Attitude Era in order to use as some facade to put over your stupid fucking in-ring action, it's not gonna work anymore. The Attitude Era has been dead for nearly 25 years. 
the Monday Night War has been gone for nearly 25 years. Sitting back and consistently thinking to yourself that what the Attitude Era produced in total is something that you can derive from in order to use as a facade to put over your shitty, I'll just say it, hate me if you want to, I don't care, woke wrestling, it does nothing for nobody. Your facade of, well, we're going to wrestle like this and do a bunch of risky shit that we know, for the most part, we're not going to get in trouble from, at least not from a vast quantity of people, as far as focusing on the things that maybe kind of hit a little bit close to home when it comes to their, you know, ideology or, you know, way of how they look at life. We just need to be safe edgy. Safe edgy. But this is what Safe Edgy gives you. It gives you arenas like Collision. It gives you numbers consistently downfalling. Like you see with AEW in general. And fuck, this goes to a WWE also. Because they're the leaders in the end of the day. They're doing good. The entire wrestling industry is doing good at the moment. But guess what? They're in a position right now where they can risk losing all their fucking um, audience members from about 20 years ago. They are in a position right now where they can risk being boring that shit at times. They're a staple. We need you, AEW, to do your job and give them a run for its money. But fuck. You can't even you can't even establish yourself, bro. But then you have these wrestling fans, these losers, always undermining the company. And then the company allows themselves to be undermined. And then they sit back and they have to make up every excuse in the book as to why the metrics have been to be the way that it is. When in reality, you can sum this all up to you fucking suck. That's what it is. Overall, the numbers, the attendance, how everybody, you just fucking suck. Hate it or love it, you fucking suck. WWE has transformed themselves almost into a Disney-esque type of company. People don't come anymore to watch the wrestling. They just come for the experience. You are nowhere near leagues close to being that established. So you have to do what brings you to the table, which is the wrestling. And I'm not talking about the in ring stuff. No, no, no. That's a part. We talk. I'm talk. We're all talking about everything that factors into what makes professional wrestling professional wrestling. And when you just focus on one factor, it's like a kid who's trying to graduate school. Just because you pass one subject doesn't mean filling all the other four subjects is going to get you to graduate any grade. It's going to be a reoccurring problem. It is. It's going to be a reoccurring problem. No one's going to be able to look at AEW the same and then think to themselves that they themselves are going to put themselves in a higher position if they keep doing stupid shit like this. That image that you see a collision, it's going to happen again. It's going to get lower and lower. And their excuse, rather than actually trying to, you know, take the problem and redeem it or, you know, make it better. Then no, no, we need to stretch ourselves a hell of a lot more thinner. More shows! Boring ass AEW, we need more shows. Yeah, because that's that's how you answer most of your fucking problems. Yeah, absolutely correct. That's correct, correct. Whenever my business is failing, my first thought is, well, shit, let's hire more people. Dumb fucking people, I swear to God. But let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Sorry for some of the interruptions that kind of fucking up, fucked up my fucking way of thinking, lineup, whatever. Now I'm fucking thinking about other shit right now. Fuck. Hate this, hate this, hate this. Fuck. <sighs> Only difference is... I can fix this situation actively, and it'll be done in a couple of hours. Can't say the same thing about AEW. As always, my name is Devontae, and I'll be catching you guys later. Deuces, P. Ice.